and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to another Munchie Talk discussion video. And yes, we are at the computer table because you see something that might trigger you. How to introduce a female hamster to a male hamster by Tom Ryan. We are going to be exploring the deep dark web of horrible pet care articles. So if you guys are familiar with last year in 2019, I did a video about the Spruce Pets 2019 recommended cages. And so I'm going to be going over and reviewing these sites. But anyways, we're doing pets on mom.me and a lot of these are very cringe. So today is going to be all about cringe and education for you guys to understand understand why I really hope nobody is spreading this. But what prompted me to actually focus on Pets on Mom Dodd to me is because there was an admin, I believe, admin or moderator of one of the hamster groups I am in that actually shared one of these articles I'm going to share with you guys today. And I already knew ahead of time that this was one of these sites I want to tackle on because they have horrible pet care. And I really don't want people, especially people that advocate for better care of our beloved hamsters to be throwing around garbage articles by people who do not have a hobby in hamster keeping and they are just a consumer that is forced to make articles to supply their website so that when people go to their website you see these wonderful ads like Office Depot, Office Max, sale $179.99 or Solo Tylenol, rapid release gels or if we scroll down the Entirely Pets right here or some more Tylenol all on the side or a video that won't stop playing. I have it on mute but I can hear it in my headset I have up here that sometimes it just goes off and I don't want it to. Those are what the sites push because they want people to click on them so they can make money off these ads they are constantly playing. It's playing. It's playing as I'm trying to talk to you guys about it. And then actually, if I were to refresh this page, let's do it right here. There's actually one that pops up in the very freaking corner. It's a L'Oreal lightweight commercial. Oh, it drives me absolutely insane. So these are not websites you guys should be focusing on because all they care about is ads. What you want to be focusing on, which I will go over here in a bit, is you want to be looking at hamster associations like the California Hamster Association or the Ontario Hamster Club or the British Hamster I think association. I'm not so sure what they have on their association's website because I'm just familiar with the Ontario and the California Hamster Association. They just won't have ads on the side here because that's not their intent. Their intent is to educate, not to get money out of clicks to their website. So please guys, I hope today's video is very encouraging for you guys to spread good information because sites like these right here do provide good information. I will be talking to you about what you see on the screen here, but first let's get started with how to introduce a female hamster to a male hamster. If you want to give your boy hamster a female companion, you have to follow certain protocols. Otherwise, you could create a dangerous situation. Hamsters can be territorial little critters and while they may not pose much of a threat to you, they can do some serious damage to one another. The breed, sex, and place of introduction are important things to consider when introducing two hamsters, especially ones of opposite sex. So here we go, scrolling down. Why is this article bad? I mean, it's leading up to say that maybe they should not be housed together, right? Right? Let your hamster go on living the bachelor life if he is of a breed that doesn't appreciate company. Syrian hamsters, namely, are territorial. They simply refuse to live with others. If you want to give him a companion, the pair will have to live in separate cages. Okay, good news so far. Place your female hamster in the male's cage and monitor them as they interact. Wait, what? Don't place a hamster in a cage together if they are Syrians. Okay, got it. But now, guess what? Place the male with the female. It's just, it's such a weird article. Females are more aggressive than males, so putting a female in with the male makes him less of a threat. He is in his own territory, not invading hers. What? Are you, are you kidding me? That right there is dangerous advice. Whether it be dwarf hamsters, Syrian hamsters, 
Chinese hamsters, but saying that you can place a female with a male and the male is gonna respect the female's space. Well, no, duh, because the female's gonna be like, get away from me. I don't want you in my territory. And the male's gonna be like, okay. If you guys remember Bon Bon and Cloud's story, Cloud was picked on by Bon Bon because Bon Bon didn't want to be messed with. They even said, don't put Syrians together, but then they jump on, place your female hamster with the male hamster. Like they didn't clarify either about species but at this point, it's sh you, this is terrible. This is like allowing anybody to invite their male hamster with a female hamster and let's continue because you know there's no consequences to this in this article that they address because they, they don't. They don't address it. The hamsters may fight a little at first, but if it seems excessive or one-sided, remove the female and her cage separately. Set up a new, fresh, never-used cage for the hamsters to share. Sometimes when one hamster is introduced to another in the existing habitat, territorial fighting can prevent them from cohabiting. If the environment is neutral ground, however, it makes this type of fighting somewhat less likely. Where are they getting this information from? Hide a few small treats in the cage, introduce both hamsters at the same time. By the time they're done, hunting trees will have become used to one another. <laughs> no, that is definitely not true. This is absolutely not true. And that is the end of the article. Let's learn a little bit about Tom Ryan here. Tom Ryan is a freelance writer, editor, and English tutor. He graduated from the University of Pittsburgh with a degree in English writing and has also worked as an art and entertainment reporter with the Pitt News and a public relations and advertising co-writer with the blah 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 library of Pittsburgh. Okay, that is a horrible article. For one, they did not explain there's consequences when putting a male and the female together and they're saying this is the way to do it. Like if anybody's wondering, can I put female and male hamster together? Guess what? This is probably gonna pop up. It's gonna be how to introduce a female hamster to a male hamster with no consequences. A, did you know that they can reproduce very quickly? Yeah. So uh, for I believe the Russian dwarf hamsters, they can have babies every 22 to 30 days. And Syrians, they have a gestation period of 16 days. Hmm, did you know that? And did you know that unlike humans, they cannot control themselves and want to reproduce. So if they mingle together very nicely, what's gonna happen is they're gonna get it all on. And you cannot stop the outcome because you're gonna have babies now. You're gonna have babies now because I am screaming babies. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. No, no. I hope my point comes across to you that this is garbage article. Please never put hamsters together. There is a lot of animals that can coexist together. However, with hamsters, it is an absolute no. And with dwarf hamsters, I can get into this in a different video, but it is less likely in captivity that dwarf hamsters would get along, but there is special circumstances. If people were to have a pairing, they have to be same litter, same gender. They gotta be together for a while. You have to give them an extremely large space that is not divided because if if the space is divided, say for instance, like with a tube to another cage and there's two separate cages being attached by a tube, it could cause territorial dominance. One hamster could want one space, the other could want the other, and if they come to meet together, they could fight it out. So it's very dangerous. Preventative care honestly is the best care. Moving on. Next one. I wonder what could be worse or as worse as this one. Why do hamsters bite the cage? Ooh, here we go. Oh, look, the Aristocats are right down here. Hey, oh, and there's a kitty. Oh, is this a good ad? Oh, I hope this is a good ad. Is this a rescue ad? Oh, I might actually wanna watch this, but hey, it's an ad that's irritating. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so there's already errors in the sentence. If you've ever had a hamster, you have probably familiar with Okay, <laughs> you are probably familiar with a couple of situations. The first is his chewing a hole in his cage to stage a daring escape and prompt a search and chase throughout the house. I am having trouble reading this. I feel like I'm having a stroke here. Actually, before we get further into this, let me just see the author. Tom Ryan is a freelance writer, editor, English tutor. Hey, it's the same dude. Yeah, <laughs> same dude. He graduated from uh, college <laughs> and the first sentence of the entire article is already making me hurl. 
The second is his keeping you awake night after night with the clingy, clangy melody of his nocturnal cage biting. Hamsters have a good reason for biting the cage bars. They do have a good reason for biting them? Okay, let me hear it. So don't think he's necessarily doing it just to annoy you. Oh, humor. Uh, funny. Attention-seeking behavior. Hamsters are nocturnal animals and they're good about entertaining themselves, but they still want a little love sometimes. If your hamster is chewing on the cage bars, it's oftentimes because he wants your attention. I can say there is hamsters that have actually come to the cage door and want your attention. There is hamsters that will literally follow you from one side of the cage to the other side and it's very cute when you record it. You see yourself moving here and they're running up to you and you're moving here and they're running back over to you wanting your attention. However, when they start bar biting, it can be stressful because they want out, they want to get to you in a, in a happy way. But at the same time, this is not seen so often and of course only bar biting happens in wired enclosures. So just to make it clear, they're not gonna be chewing any wires in any sort of DIY bin cage or aquarium tank. Love of chewing. Plain and simple hamsters love to chew. It may not seem like a particularly intellectually stimulating way of entertaining oneself, but to the hamster, it just feels good. Do biting bars feel good? No, it's not natural. Metal is not natural to the wild. They like chewing on wood. So when they're chewing on something that is not wood, even though you have provided them with chew toys inside the enclosure and they're still chewing the bar, that is stress behavior. And I will continue here to see if there is a mention of the stress inducing behaviors that bar biting causes. And hopefully they say it because if they leave it out, this gives people, especially new time owners, the wrong impression of why they're biting and think it's cute. This is due to largely in part to their biology, particularly their teeth. Unlike your teeth, which remain the same essential size and shape your whole life, a hamster's teeth constantly grow. Hamsters grind them down constantly by regular chewing. Chewing on a hard object like his cage bars is an evolutionary imperative that keeps his choppers in good condition if no more suitable source for non is available. How about you recommend people would choose there, buddy? How about you also tell people that hamsters actually chip their teeth on really hard metals because they can't actually grind what they're chewing on down? Yes, they need to grind their teeth down, but they do it naturally on wood that is at least hard enough for them to grind on and then soft enough for them not to completely ruin their teeth. Because once a hamster gets a very chipped tooth, that tooth could cause sharpness and that sharpness could actually cause them to not actually eat which causes more health concerns and that is not what they're telling you here. Cage considerations. Because hamsters sometimes can't resist chewing on their bark cages you should keep a hamster in a cage with metal bars. Oh because they can't resist you know chewing on those metal bars keep them in a metal bar cage. <laughs> Wood and plastic cages can be attractive but are also susceptible to being chewed through leading to avoidable escapes. So yes it is true hamsters can chew through wood cages and that's why you don't see me really advertising much for wood cages because I've seen the majority of really good wood cages chewed up through and escaped. Depending on which plastic and depending on the size, you really don't see hamsters trying to chew through them because they aren't as destructive as gerbils and their incisors. Oh goodness, they have a very powerful bite. It is painful, worse than hamsters, in my opinion, because I've been bit by a gerbil before. Not fun. And so I can tell you right here, just this person does not know really what they're talking about. They are just gently trying to brush the surface of, say for instance, like your hair, but they're not really getting in there to lather it up and to mix it up and to actually make it so that the shampoo works in your hair. It's basically what I'm saying here is like, they are not digging deep into this at all. They are giving off really mediocre answers and responses. Productive alternatives. A hamster has to chew. He doesn't have a choice in that matter or his teeth will get too long. He doesn't have to chew on his cage though and you don't want to encourage it. But, 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 but you're basically saying that this is fine though for all the stuff that you talked about before. So give him something better suited for his gnawing habit. Once a week, give him a hamster chew stick or something as simple as a tree branch. Once a week? No, buddy, no. We're gonna stop right there. Hamsters need to have chew toys in their enclosure 24 seven. If you want to introduce a new chew, go ahead to spice things up. But you should have a mixture of different chews with different textures so they can choose and pick. And if they get bored, 
just keep replacing those shoots or just taking one out for a different time, placing a new one in and just rotating those. Don't just once a week give them a chew and they'll be fine. No. So that was a crap article. Let's go over to the other one. Let's see who's this one by. How to make your hamster smell better. Jen Davis. Oh, hey, it's a Target ad. Hi, Target. I shop at you. Let's just read the author real quick. Jen Davis has been writing since 2004. She has served as a newspaper reporter and her freelance articles have appeared in magazines such as The Horses Incorporated, The Paisley Pony, and The Alabama Living. So basically she does have some at least animal stuff in her actual about me section, but it's pretty ponies and horses. So let's see what she says about making hamsters smell better. Take a trip to the veterinarian. It is unusual for a hamster to develop a significant odor. Huh, I just got a brand new female Syrian hamster. Mmm, she smells musky. Ooh, what is this? Huh, she smells. Let me see if this article can provide me some information about uh, female hamsters and why they smell funny. And if you're confident the odor is not his waste from the enclosure, take him to the veterinarian to rule out any medical causes for the smell. Sometimes a bad odor can be a sign that your hamster has an undiagnosed health problem. Oh my gosh, the musky smell I'm smelling for my hamster definitely is concerning. Oh, it, it smells like raw eggs almost to me. Oh, I guess I'll have to waste my money by taking my female Syrian hamster into the vets. Oh wait, what's this? There's no mention anywhere the female Syrian hamsters are very musky during their adult life when they are mature enough to produce litters and that um, they actually have this odor because they go into heat every four to six days trying to attract a mate and if I know that they're in heat I can stroke their back and their butt sticks up. Oh I didn't know that. The white discharge that I'm seeing my hamster make is actually completely normal and it's a hormonal thing so they can attract mates and my worrying and panicking has led me to spend money at the vets unnecessarily when I found out no hamsters are just and heat, but this article told me I need to go to the veterinarian if there's any unusual odors. But hey, I'm a new time hamster owner. I don't know what that smells like. There's no mention in this article of why a hamster could smell or the mention in this article right here of ammonia. They do not really go into detail about different species, different ammonia levels, what you need to be doing. They do make notes of how to clean enclosure here and improving ventilation if you're smelling it quite often, but they do not specify species and what they smell like because each species does have a different smell but my main concern about this is it's loose information here where you could be spending money you didn't have to because you worried about something that did not need to be addressed because you got a female searing hamster these sites don't really help please go to hamster clubs hamsters associations they will at least be helpful or visit hamster groups because most of the time they do know what they're talking about but just be aware there is misinformation that can be spread in hamster groups still. They are not perfect, always do your research. Lifespan of a teddy bear hamster. Now the only thing I wanna tackle in this article right here, actually let's see the uh, author real quick here. Jen Davis, um, she is the horse person that we just talked about. Okay, for the past article. Let's hear about the proper hamster care. Teddy bear hamsters require an aquarium of at least 10 gallon capacity or a similarly sized wire cage. I don't know when these articles come out because if you notice, None of these articles anywhere have a date. They only list the author, which unfortunately you cannot click on the author to actually see all the articles. Other websites will allow you to, to do this so you can actually see what they post. There's only references for which I click on because it shows me I can click on it, but unfortunately nothing ever pops up, but there's four references here and they only do photo credits for their main image that they use. But here, I just don't know how old this article is and that can be dangerous, especially if people are trying to find newer updated care and you have stuff in here to mask or hide when they post this to seem like it is legit. So somebody could be like, oh, I know a 10 gallon. That's only $15. I think it's still 15. Is it 15 or is that a five gallon? Five gallon might be 15 or 10 gallon might be 15. But yeah, just a tank. Cool. Um, that's great. I'll just grab that. And um, that's all I need, right? Right. Okay. So just spend $15 on a hamster and you're good. For a cage at least. No, oh, this is, this is, complete garbage here. So let's move on to the next one. How to keep a hamster's claws and teeth short. We are not tackling this article here by Deborah London. What we're tackling is hamster when this is clearly a mouse in a horrible wheel. This is a very, very damaging image right here for those of you who know that 
those wire wheels are very dangerous for the paddings of their feet and they're so spacey and it's hard for them to walk on, they can get problems and inflammation with their paws. But this is a mouse, that is not a hamster. And this one right here, I want to talk to you guys about because I feel like it's very important to what I said at the beginning of this video about checking out your hamster associations and your clubs because they will provide you with factual information that is very positive. And this actually was spread in the hamster groups because these sites, you can't give credit to them at all. They are taking stuff and they're trying to supposedly resource it, but I can't click on the links at all if it's my end or not, but they don't provide good factual information. Hamster associations will. First off, you see a male Syrian hamster. You can see his little balls right there. And of course it's on a metal wire and just promoting photos like that is very damaging to what we're trying to achieve, which is to enlighten and to encourage people that there is better care out there and these are not okay. So that image really sucks to see. Yeah, because we're still selling these wheels and if we want them to stop, we need to spread awareness because when you stop buying a specific thing or if you demand that they don't do something anymore it does take time, but you can make that market go down so you see them less often and you see more suitable choices that hopefully people will gravitate to. So basically um, this article is saying don't feed them so much and uh, limiting the daily serving to about a tablespoon because overfeeding vegetables can result in a variety of health problems. And it is true that there are specific uh, vegetables out there that have higher sugars and they are a little bit more watery. There is research out there that will say that something something will not cause this no matter if it has a higher water content but you also should be making sure that fruits and vegetables are given like three times a week or every other two to three days in little amounts you got to understand their stomachs aren't that big so don't feed them a whole lot feed them what you think a good plate size for them is and to monitor them because if you see leftovers the next day in their enclosure take them out they um, don't really provide a whole lot of information on the what's right and what's wrong of vegetables and fruits to feed them. They just list some vegetable choices here. Inadequate nutrition, your hamster may prefer the taste of crunchy fresh vegetables over his regular dry commercial hamster pellet. But if he fills up on nothing but vegetables, he may ignore his other food, which can result in him developing an unbalanced diet lacking in necessary nutrients. So it does have nutrients. Vegetables do have nutrients and it is, and it is really highly encouraged to introduce vegetables weekly. Now, they're kind of saying here that he's just only solely most likely going to go for vegetables. That's not true. Vegetables are helpful. You just got to make sure you're not over bloating and you're not feeding them something that could be dangerous to them, especially when it comes to sugars in fruits and vegetables. You want to make sure for your species of animals, such as say the Campbell's Russian dwarf hamster, who is prone to having diabetes versus Syrians that don't have known history with diabetes and are most likely not going to get it. There is a balancing and you got to look for articles that will provide this information. So a good place for safe and unsafe foods is actually the Ontario Hamster Club here. Safe and unsafe foods they have here, they have a list of fruits, a list of vegetables, proteins, miscellaneous foods, controversial foods like almonds, avocados, chocolates, and yes, you guys are aware that I did not like chocolate being fed solely to hamsters when I did the ginger's litter, but there is people out there that have said to me that yes, chocolate is completely fine in the tiniest small quantities, but in larger quantities, this could be dangerous. But for me, just because I saw the hamsters were on nothing but bird seed, which doesn't have a complete balance for hamsters, and chocolate chip cookies, that is bad, especially in that quantity that somebody was feeding them chocolate. That can really be bad. But when it comes to others like citrus fruits, the mints, the cucumbers, dietary products, hamsters are able to process lactose. So they are not lactose intolerant, say for instance, like gerbils. So this actually provides really good information here. And garlic and grapes and leeks and onions, peanut butter, raisins, and then they list at the very end dangerous food. Now, if you saw these foods up here that are very controversial and you see this, say for instance, on California Hamster Association's feeding facts and stuff, they actually do list healthy fruits, protein foods, and then foods to avoid. They do have a difference when it comes to what they recommend is what to avoid versus, for instance, these guys here. Because if you see here, grape seeds is on the foods to avoid for the California Hamster Association. But grapes over here, if we scroll, let's see, 
Is it down? Yeah. Right here. Similar to chocolate, since many dogs cannot tolerate grapes, many hamster owners and keepers have deemed grapes unsafe. There is evidence to support grapes having health benefits, but there's also instances where they have provided information for specific articles about the toxicity of grapes being given to your smaller mammals. So that's why for me at the rescue here, I avoid giving my small animals grapes because to me, I have looked up the evidence where toxicity in animals is bad. And so I just avoid it altogether, but there is differences in the two different associations. So like I say to you guys, please, oh please, do your research, make sure you're looking and you can determine for yourself what you would like to use, what you would like to give your animals and what you have learned because there is so much information. And yes, it can be a tipping scale of like, well, should I do this because this site says so or should I do this because this site says so. You just, you gotta pile up all of the information you have found, you gotta find credible sources, people that have been doing this for years, not just some random mom account website that is going to share with you all those cute little hamster pics and not really discuss with you important critical detail information. You just gotta pass along good information to others in hopes that other people will get on board. In the hamster groups, there was one person that said, it took me forever to find you guys because I did not know about this. But one thing led to another, which led to another, and that's why we're here. So thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed today's video on me, I guess you can say dissing these articles. I'm sorry if anyone's offended. But if you enjoyed today's video, hit like to show support. Comment down below with anything you like to say about these articles or articles you've recently seen that have totally been cringe worthy. You are welcome to share them down below. And if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.